spend all the people who made this possible today. The ones that are cooking outside and making the rain, I'm not sure what. But, uh, David, singers. Let me forget about that. It's just been a wonderful area. All the ones that made this possible for us this morning. I'm grateful for that. But I'm very grateful for the little children in our church, the Smash children. This week I went to them. And I found this banner in one of the closets here at the church. So I went to the Smash kids and talked to some of their caregivers. And I said, can you draw on the banner something that reminds you of God, or reminds you of a Pentecost or a fire, or things of that nature. So they had, they had drawn different things. Here's a balloon, a helium balloon with fire around the bottom. Scripture that they one remember John 3 16. Uh, the balloons, the kites. This is the day that when the wind, we talk about the wind of the spirit leading us and guiding us. I'm so grateful for the ministry of children here in this church. It's happening. It takes time. But these young people are coming forward and doing things. I just hope that you so far this morning have enjoyed uh, this little bit of a different style of service. Pray that God will continue to lead us in the future. Thank you so much for that. I want to read this morning some verses from Acts 2. I'm just going to read some selected verses. This is the story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. That's very important right there. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as a Spirit gave them ability. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, the man already attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. And you crucified him and killed him by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in death's power. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, What should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to be. He testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. That is a Pentecostal Sunday. Any preachers all part. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning for us being together and Hearing the scriptures that's been read and the song of the Lord that uh, has been sung today, we're so grateful for uh, each and every one who has contributed to this time of worship. Now, Lord, be with us and for a few moments as we uh, expound upon the word, uh, the Don John passage and the passage from Acts. And God, just help us to open our ears and our hearts and help us to continue to become a Pentecost church. A church is on fire for you 
to help us to live Pentecostal lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today, dear friends, is a day of celebration. Today, we really celebrate the birthday of the church. This is really when the early church started. Pentecost Sunday represents the ending of the Easter season and the ending of the great 50 days. And that word 50 in the original language actually means, that word Pentecost in the original language actually means 50. So the Easter season, as we know it, is, has come to an end. And today we welcome in the early church, the church of Pentecost. And it goes for like 28 weeks in the cycle of the Christian church. Pentecost gives us an opportunity, gives me an opportunity to ask a question. What is our church on fire about? What are we on fire about? The lesson said that tongues of fire rested on them. And they spoke in their own native language. I didn't read the part below, below that because I can pronounce all those big words, all those different languages. We wear the red, we fly the balloons, we put up banners, we have great food and fellowship that's before us in just a few moments. But what is it that sparks the flame of our souls as we do ministry? What is it that's making a difference in people's lives? What is it that stirs among us today? I'm convinced that if we live out our answers and we're becoming a Pentecostal church, not Pentecostal holding this church, but a Pentecost church, a church that showers people with love, like Logan saying about. A church that watches over one another from the east, as far as the east is from the west. What fuels the fire? What stirs the ministry of the church? Is it our ability to give our gifts of money? Well, let me just be practical with you. Yes, we need that. Please don't stop doing that. We have to have that in order for the church to go. Is it our gifts of compassion? Is it because we give food away on a regular basis? Are we a genuinely a genuine church that really loves everyone? After I wrote this this week, I thought to myself, these are some difficult questions, and sometimes I'm not sure if I even want to answer these questions. But I believe they can be answered. I believe they can be answered in a loving and a godly way. I believe they can be answered by today's two passages of Scripture. Oh, in this passage of Scripture from Acts, Peter preaches a powerful sermon. He's quickly reminded his listeners of times of battle old from Joel and from the psalmist David. The way we answer the question, are we becoming a Pentecost church, can be summed up in Acts 2.39. So hear this. This is how we can continue to become a Pentecost church if we believe this. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord God calls to him. This promise, friends, this promise of a power greater than any power in the world is not just for me. It's not just for you. It is for everyone whom God calls to his side. The Spirit, dear friends, does not exclude anybody. The Spirit has a way of still forgiving sins and moving the church forward. What a great day for the early church. What a great time for people to come and say, I want to be a part of this wonderful movement. Is that what's stirring us today? Do people really want to be a part of this 
great movement of faith. The scripture says, do not exclude the power of the Holy Spirit. Thinking back to this old saying, the wind blows where it chooses. It blows all around us, dear friends. It's not just for one or two, it's for everybody. John 14 also helps us understand this great comforter of the Spirit. Jesus speaks in John 14 and says, If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the spirit of truth. You can know the spirit because that spirit will be in you. That's the greatest two-letter word I've ever come to understand is that word in. That's what the spirit does. It doesn't just come. The spirit grows in, inside of us. It's not what we... It's how we live our lives and what's flowing from the inside. What lives in us. Jesus had that great answer for those people that were causing all kinds of problems day after day. He said, It's not about you doing all it's what lives, what lives inside you that makes the difference. So I think of a question this morning what can it be? How can we invoke the power of the Holy Spirit even more in our lives to live in us? There was a visitor one time to an old friend of hers, and she walked in, and this elderly lady, she asked her friend, she said, what is it you do? You, you're such a devoted person. What, how do you, what, do you, what do you do here in a day's time? She said, well, every morning I get up and read my Bible as long as I can. And then she said, and then I get a hymn book or a song book, and I sing all the songs that I can sing. And she said, and then I just sit back and let God love me. I sit back and let God love me. Wow. What a great, what a great story. Let me, have you ever ever uh, canned vegetables or other things in the garden? Thank you. 
生命。Thank you so much for being in the church.